Hey everyone, Bentrick Builds here with another tool review. Today I'm comparing the 18 volt um, DMP180 versus my 40 volt MP001G tire inflators. I've had this one for about a year or so now. Um, I've only actually used it once or twice uh, on bike tires and things in the garage. Hasn't been used a lot, um, but I thought I'd go and grab this. It's been out for a while now, uh, but I saw it in store and I thought, awesome, I'll be able to pump up my van with it hopefully and my truck because this one couldn't quite cut it it was just taking too long with a lot of weight in my van you'll see that later in the video um, so yeah a few quick specs on it they've both got digital uh, readings on the top so you can set your different modes to PSI your bar or your KPA um, as long as you've also got your um, plus or minus so you can go up and down the scale and do that so in New Zealand we're paying roughly for the skin uh, kind of the mid-range I've, I've found today is about $200 for the 18 volt version and about $300 for this. I did buy this in a combo uh, for $400, came with a 2.5 amp battery, a charger and the tool itself so I thought that was the best way to buy it um, and I've got a lot of the 40 volt tools now so I wanted to, the more batteries the better so I'm kind of swapping and changing, I've got the new pin gun and that was then taking my impact batteries and such and such so I was quite happy adding an extra one to the itinerary. Um, max PSI for the 18 volt is 121 PSI compared to the 161 of the 40 volt. Uh, we've also got a total skin weight, so that without the battery, we're looking at 1.02 kgs, so 2.25 pounds, and 2.18 kgs for the 40 volt without the battery, and that's 4.8 pounds. So. Uh, reasonable difference in weight, which you can also see is a decent difference in size, um, but that allows us a lot of extra flow, airflow, and a lot of uh, extra capabilities as far as what we can pump up. So, um, yeah, I'm going to jump onto my van now and show you guys what I kind of brought this one for. The whole purpose of of the idea of it in the van every day. I don't I don't leave it in the workshop. I take it with me everywhere. So um, yeah, it actually saved me the other day. I was driving to work and the trailer I had on the back um, was a big generator and I noticed it was pulling and jerking my van quite a bit so I jumped out the car in the, in the pouring rain and luckily I had this because the tyre was almost dead flat so I got soaked but I was only out in the rain for about two minutes or so got the tyre you know, to a reasonable level and then got my way and made my way to site and finished it off there so um, yeah, come over to the van and we'll check out how long it takes to do my commercial grade tyres so here we are next to the van everyone, I've got my um, 40 volt tyre inflator with a 2.5 amp uh, battery on full charge, 4 bars and I'm also using myself a 5 amp battery on my 18 volt full charge also um, idea for that is kind of 5 and 18 volt is in comparison the same as the 40 volt 2.5 uh, amp it's going to be interesting to see how long the 18 volt goes against the uh, 40 volt and that's even if it does pump it up to that um, being so heavy so I'm going to bring the camera down low again and drop you right down to the floor level and you can see I've set the tyre down to 20 psi and I'm going to start off with the 18 volt and see how many minutes it takes um, so that's a total of 31 psi we're going up in, in scale I'll then drop it back down to 20 again and then go on the 40 volt and merge that in so quick review um, that is, this is quite a heavy duty test compared to doing like a wheelbarrow wheel or um, a bike tyre or something so I'll also do those as well so let's do this quickly so there we have it as you can see 18 volt first I'm just going to plug that into the tyre and show you guys that it's set to um, the 20 psi pop that on there like so like that we need to turn the tool on on the power button there like this and then on the top we're reading 22 at the moment it's hard to see in the light there so there we go I'm going to reset that down to let's make it see so you can hold that down to go fast so I'm going to go 20 hold this down and there we go it's just auto stopped being 20 psi already so set that up to 51 and almost there Boom. I'm going to grab my stopwatch on my phone and we're right laughing so here we go stopwatch is starting now
So, that there took a total time of five minutes and six seconds. And as you can see on the digital screen, coming in close there, uh, the lighting. There we go, it's hard to see, isn't it? You got 51 PSI, so that's actually the first time I've ever uh, pumped the van up that low to that full max PSI. I didn't really think it would do it, to tell you the truth. Um, so let's go and jump onto the 40 volt now and see if that beats five minutes. Um, expecting it will, but you never know. So let's go now, swap merging over. <coughs> so there you have it. We've got the 40 volt inflator now, and you can see on the reading that it is at 20 psi. So if I'm going to set that down and put the camera back down like I did before, you set this to go to 51. So to do that, You've got your mode, but I'm not currently on the correct mode PSI, so hold down the power button until I get to where I want to be. So right down, I've gone above, so I'm at 58, I'll go down to 51. There we go, and fire away. Happy as. And there you go, so 3 minutes 02 um, for the 40 volt inflator and 5 minutes 06 for the 18 volt, so kind of what I expected. Super heavy van, I have tried to pump it up the 18 volt before but kind of gave up and didn't wait the full length of time, so I just kind of drove up the road to the gas station and thought bugger this, I'll go fill it up there in 30 seconds or a minute, um, whatever that takes, and get it done. So just to give you a rough idea, I've done a van walkthrough before, um, a while ago now, Bit better setup now as far as the setup of filming setup and also the van itself. So, I will do a review um, and a walkthrough again in the coming weeks. But just to give you a rough idea, I've got two massive drawers full of tools, some of them are out on the bench currently, the drop saw and vacuums and things. But I've also got full uh, sustain festival sustainer boxes full of batteries, skill saws, sanders, all sorts of stuff. So, it's not a light load. Um, you've got all corking guns and tubes, sealants, glues sandpaper, everything in there, so that does throw a spanner in the mix as far as um, the results will go, but if I'm going to quickly do a bike tyre now, uh, maybe a wheelbarrow tyre as well on the week bench, you'll be able to see a real life kind of what you guys might be doing yourself, and lot, not a lot of people will be trying to pump up heavy vans like this, um, but for me it's, it's just to save me, uh, if I happen to get a flat tyre, or if I put my spare on and my spare tyre is flat, um, I can do it on the spot. You know, with reasonable time. So, yeah, it's all good. Good, good little test to see what the result was going to be. But anyway, let's do a wheelbarrow tie now and a bike tie. So to start this test off, I've got both my bike tire and my wheelbarrow tire fully deflated. We're going to do the 18 volt um, before we do the 40 volt. So I'm going to reset this. Um, I've got it on 51 currently because I've just done the van. So the power button's on the side and I'm going to set this to uh, 80. 80 psi, so that's us there. So let's get my timer out as we're going and I'm just going to write down what I end up with uh, for both models. I'm guessing we're going to have a better speed for the 40 volt but not by a lot considering it's only a small tyre. So reset that. Clip this on to the wheel. Of course, this is the only, only time I've actually ever used this bike pump or well, inflator basically is for bike wheels and things. So I, I know this works, I've done it before. So starting now, we're going to start the pump in 3, 2, 1. Sweet. So that was 17 seconds total. So I'm just going to write that down over here 
on the bench and we have 18 volts, 17 seconds for the tire. I'm going to pop that off there and drop this back down to 30 psi, which is what I'm going to pump up the wheelbarrow to. And skipping through the numbers now, almost there. That's it, so just hook that on. So 70 seconds for the wheel on the bike wheel, and again, I'm going to reset the timer. Stopwatch, reset, three, two, one, on there. Very, very similar. So we got 17.7 seconds there. So this is basically the same time. So 17.7. Now I'm going to re-deflate these and do the same thing repeated with the 40 volts. So just give me a moment. <coughs> Here we go. So starting on the bike tire again. Just going to wind, wind on the 40 volt um, hose here. And I'm going to get that set to 80 psi. This one's slightly different. It's got a twist on kind of end to it rather than the clip on 18 volt version. So turn that on. We're going to skip through to, I'm on 80 already. So we're going to go on the timer. Make sure we're following what we're up to. And three, two, one, starting. Nine point nine seconds. So that was pretty quick. So 9.9, .9. and that is our uh, bike. And then changing that over back to the wheelbarrow, we'll see if we can beat that. So that was pretty good. That was about eight seconds faster than the 18 volt. Um, jumping onto here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's see if we can reset. We'll reset this back to 30, and we'll see how much faster it is than the 18 volt as well. Pretty basic test, but this is all a lot of people would be using it for anyway. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty standard uh, use here. So three, two, one. We'll start again. And that was ten point nine seconds. So overall, um, way faster, even over a short period, uh, even over a small kind of wheel on that so that was a total of seven se uh, eight seconds faster on the bike wheel and about seven seconds faster um or well just under seven seconds faster on the 40 volt for the wheelbarrow so it definitely is more powerful um as you can see in the in the video earlier it pumped up the van a lot quicker than the 18 volt did 18 volt still did it to my surprise um but you see that's pretty solid so would I buy the 40 volt or would I buy the 18 volt is the question I suppose after those reviews. Both of the tools are still on full charge but that's going to fade away pretty quickly and my best guess is the 40 volt is going to last longer um, and do more tyres just being the new platform and you can have bigger batteries too. I could even go ahead and use my uh, 5 amp battery that I have in my drop saw if I wanted to. I could throw that bad boy on the 40 volt and you'd be going for ages. So. You do have that extra capability, potentially, if you want to go down that road, if you want to do all four tyres of your truck, I'd be going for that all day. Um, but yeah, so I'd buy it again, personally, I think it's great. I think even even though it's only, you know, seven, eight seconds faster on a bike tyre, it's just that, it's, it's just convenient not having to wait so long, but it's, for me, it's the fact that I can pump up a heavy vehicle um, to two minutes quicker than the other one and don't have, don't have to sit there holding the trigger for so long. That is one downside I do find of these tools. I think it'd be awesome if you could hold the trigger and then push a button in or something, some sort of lock so that you don't have to hold it the whole time. You could just set it, step back and wait for it to be done. That would be the ultimate. I'm sure many, I'm sure there are other brands out there that must do that. So I'm kind of gutted that Makita didn't do that and integrate that into this new tool. Um, but it works anyway. So maybe in the future we'll see that again. Um, I would just recommend 18 volt if you're just going to be, um, you know, pumping bike tyres up and, and little things like that, go for the 18 volt if you already have the platform. I wouldn't jump onto the 40 volt range um, if you haven't already for other tools. I'm already on the whole platform with drop saws and um, all my skill saws and all sorts of things throughout the whole range. So, works for me. I can grab it off a tool in anywhere in my van and gun with that. So, hope that guys, hope that helps um, answer some of your questions. Um, obviously, harder to store. There's a lot bigger, but. It's not usually an issue for anyone. So my apprentice has brought the 18 volt 
I'm going to give that to him tomorrow at work and he's going to use that himself when he goes mountain biking and he does it all the time. So that's going to be convenient. Um, hope you guys enjoy the video. I've got another one coming up soon reviewing my HS003 uh, GZ skill saw, which is the original 40 volt 185 millimeter skill saw. I'm reviewing that to my latest purchase that I got the other day, and that is the HS004 GZ. So this one is the track saw compatible um, skill saw. I'm going to explain in my video when it's out why I brought that and why I'm replacing my current um, daily. This is my daily over here. I've had this for over a year or so, and I'll give you a rundown of what I think. Um, do I like the saw? Does it have good battery runtime and, and capabilities and so on? These are exactly the same. I was gifted this product, so I've actually flicked this on, but I'm going to do a video before I lose that one. Um, so this will stay in the workshop. I'm actually not going to take it to site anymore. I'm going to use that full time, being the fact that I can run it on the track store and gives you that extra option there. So I'll tell you why you might use that over the track saw for certain cuts and you know just why it's better in general. So uh, flick a subscribe comment down below what you want to see next I've got a drop saw to review explain how many cuts per battery on different materials and what I think about the cutting capabilities I'm trying to get my hands on a 260 and a 305 millimeter to do at the same time um, so until then I will hold fire and just wait because I think that'll be a cool video if you guys like any of the 40 volt tools let me know what your favorite tool is what you want to see reviewed um, and put to real test I've used all of the 40 volt gear for over a year now so I'm finally going to start pumping up some videos of a real life, um, how they are. I don't like doing out of the box videos too much because you don't have a full in-depth um, kind of review of what you actually know works and so on. So like I said, subscribe, look forward to the next video. Thank you for watching and um, yeah, too easy. Cheers.